Hear now the thesis verse for today's message that comes out of Acts chapter 15 in the 38th verse. But Paul decided not to take with them one who had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not accompanied them in the work. But Paul decided not to take with them one who had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not accompanied them in the work. Providence and our guests all around the world, with the help of your prayers and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we want to speak to you this morning briefly on the subject of why did you leave me? Why did you leave me? Friends, here in the book of Acts, you should know that the gospel is being spread all across the world. It is being spread out from Jerusalem to both the Jews and the Gentiles. It is being spread in surrounding countries, in surrounding territories, and in surrounding cities. The gospel is going forward. And here in our reading in the book of Acts, the gospel is being spread. The Bible teaches us here in the book of Acts that the cause for the movement of the apostles and the other followers of Jesus Christ is the persecution that they were under. We find in reading these chapters that both external persecution and internal both persecution, both external pressures and internal pressures, they were mounting amongst the people of faith. And as the stakes became more serious, as the persecutions mounted, the followers of Jesus were running away from their enemies, yet everywhere they ran, they took the gospel with them. Thus, it is the case that what the persecutors of the church intended as a way to disband this new upstart Christian faith actually served as a way to expand the gospel, to spread the truth of the good news, and to strengthen the faith. The book of Acts teaches us that these followers of Jesus in the first century, they paid a very high cost for the cost and the price of believing and promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ. History teaches us that many of them lost their homes in fear of persecution. Others of them lost their lives due to persecution. Second century theologian and African scholar Tertullian from Carthage writes that the blood of the martyrs is indeed the seed of the church. Their blood was spilled just as Jesus' blood was spilled. And Tertullian is teaching us in his second century writing that this is the very seed that God watered to grow the church. And some 2,000 years later, you and I are faithful Christian believers in a country where Christianity is the dominant religion because of the sacrifices our Christian brothers and sisters made 2,000 years ago. At this time in our text... One of the main persons who was responsible for the spread of this relatively new Christian gospel was a new Christian convert whose name was Paul. Paul was converted from his Jewish name of Saul after he had a Damascus Road experience and he met the Lord for himself. Paul was now a fervent and passionate defender and promoter of the faith. He was a fervent and passionate defender and promoter of the Bible. And the Bible teaches us from the ninth chapter of Acts to the present reading in the 15th chapter, Paul was an amazing missionary for the gospel. He went wherever the Holy Spirit would lead him to preach the gospel, to win souls for Christ, and ultimately to grow the church. In this 13th chapter, when you start at the first verse, you'll know that Paul is commissioned with his fellow gospel teacher Barnabas to continue sharing the gospel, to go forward in the work to which God had called them. They were commissioned in Antioch, which is a part of modern-day Syria, and they traveled to Cyprus. They traveled all throughout modern-day Greece and Turkey. They were preaching and teaching the gospel. They were healing the sick and helping the lost. They were servants of the Most High God. Although Paul and Barnabas were not a part of the original 12, the Bible says John Mark was with them. John Mark, this is 
such a strange name in the Bible. I believe it's intentionally placed in the Bible to confuse us and to make us pull our hair out. John Mark in the Bible is oftentimes confused with the disciple named John. However, John Mark is not the John that you and I know of the trio, Peter, James, and John, but rather John Mark is the Mark that you and I know as the gospel evangelist who wrote the second gospel, Mark. For the remainder of this sermon, to avoid confusion, I will refer to John Mark as Mark. Mark was with them on their first missionary journey. The Bible teaches us in the 13th chapter that he was a part of the group and prophets and teachers that were in Antioch when Paul and Barnabas were commissioned. Mark left Antioch with them to proclaim the gospel as they went to Cyprus. Yet when they left Cyprus, in verse 13, the Bible says Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and seemed to Perga in Pamphylia. And Mark, however, left them and returned to Jerusalem. Paul and Barnabas were preaching the gospel. They were sharing the good news. They were transforming lives. Yet when it came time to go to Greece, when it came time to take this mission one step higher, when it came time to go further in the call on their lives that God had given them, the Bible says that when it was time for them to move forward, Mark left them and returned to Jerusalem. A reasonable reader of the text here in the 13th chapter has to beg of the text the question, Mark, why did you leave? This seems like an innocuous detail of Mark's leaving to Jerusalem. Perhaps he had to return because he had family business. Perhaps he had to go home and get his medicine. Perhaps he had a preaching date back in Jerusalem and had to go back to a synagogue there. The Bible doesn't tell us that Mark left, and it seems like an innocuous detail until you go forward two chapters in the Bible and you realize that later Paul and Barnabas have a fight over whether or not to let Mark come back with them. That is when you realize that Mark didn't just leave. He abandoned them. He left them under some negative circumstances. The issue for you and I as readers of the text is not that Mark left them. The question that you and I have is, Mark, why did you leave him? Mark, why would you leave Paul and Barnabas after you had spread the gospel, and we're now going forward to Greece. Why would you leave Paul and Barnabas when they were doing God's will and faithfully fulfilling the call on their lives? Mark, why would you leave Paul and Barnabas as people's lives needed to be transformed, as the gospel needed to be spread, as love needed to be shared? Mark, why would you leave? We care to ask this question of the text, brothers and sisters, because if we'd be honest this morning, this is the burning heart. This is the burning question in the hearts and minds of anyone who has ever had someone leave you. It could have been a parent who left the house. It could have been a spouse who left the marriage. It could have been a friend who left the friendship. It could have been a family member who left the family. It could have been a coworker who left the job. It could have been a loved one who left the earth. But all of us can identify with being left. The pain and despair you feel from not being considered. The challenge you feel to move forward without that person with you. The love and the memories that are seemingly lost. And most importantly, the proverbial question of why that rings in our minds like the bell of a clock. Chiming constantly hour after hour after hour. Why did you leave me? Like Paul and Barnabas, I thought, I thought we were doing God's will. I thought... We were on a mission together. I thought this gospel was working through us. I thought we were both moving forward for the glorification of God. Why did you leave me? Right when the relationship was going to the next level. Right when the children needed us to be a cohesive unit. Right when working together on the job was going to take us to the next level. Right when God was moving in a mighty way in our spirits. Why? Did you leave me right when I needed someone to turn to right when I thought God would have left us together for a lifetime right when I had so much to say and so much to give right when my heart was fully open to you and my mind was fully consumed by you why did you leave me 
Brothers and sisters, if you've never been left, you ought to praise God. If you've never had anyone go from you, you ought to thank your lucky stars. If you've never experienced an ending, you ought to give God some praise. But if you are like the rest of us in the world, then you have had people walk away from you. You've had people make the decisions to leave the friendship. They've left the family. They've left the church, and they have left your presence. And right when we were going to our metaphorical Greece, right when we were going to get like Paul and Barnabas, they left you to go in the complete opposite direction. You and I were going to Greece, but you decided to go to Jerusalem, and you and I are left with the question in our lives of why did you leave me? Luke, our author, knows that this is an important question. He knows that this is the question on the minds and the hearts of anyone who's ever been left. He knows that this is the question on the minds and the hearts that has ever had to, anyone who's ever had to deal with being left. But look in the text when he points out in the 13th verse of the 13th chapter that Mark left and went to Jerusalem. Notice he doesn't immediately address the question of why Mark left. Mark leaves in the 13th chapter. And then Luke, our author, doesn't come back to tell us why he left or what was going on with the circumstances of his leaving until the 15th chapter. So for two chapters, which in the book represents months of time, we are left sitting in the uncertainty of why Mark left. For two chapters, which in the Bible represents months of time, we are left sitting in the unknown of why Mark would abandon them. For two chapters, which represents months in the Bible, we are sitting left in the despair of not knowing why Mark left. And brothers and sisters, I believe this is an appropriate literary device used by our gospel writer because this is right where you and I are sitting in the uncertainty of when people leave us. We are there without understanding. We are left without explanation. And we are waiting for it to be addressed. And, and while they were waiting for it to be addressed, if you read the 13th, 14th, and 15th chapters, you find Paul and Barnabas, they keep on moving. The Bible says they go to Iconium, they go to Lystra, and then they go to Antioch all the while, not ever addressing in the text why Mark left. Wait a minute. You mean the Bible says Mark left in chapter 13. And Paul and Barnabas went on to Iconium and spread the gospel. They went on to Lystra and spread the gospel. They went on to Antioch and spread the gospel. Wait a minute. You mean Mark left and they didn't fall apart? Mark left and, and they didn't stop doing what God had called them to do. Mark left and they didn't stop and address and deal with Mark leaving. Mark left and returned to Jerusalem, and yet, though their hearts were probably hurting, though they were probably frustrated, though they were probably confused, though they probably had tears in their eyes, you mean to tell me they kept on teaching, they kept on preaching, they kept on spreading the word and saving lives in Iconium and Lystra and Antioch. Through the 14th and 15th chapter of Acts, Paul and Barnabas do so much teaching. They do so much preaching. They do so much converting in the name of Jesus that the Bible says in the 15th chapter that a council in Jerusalem had to be convened to determine how they were going to appropriately welcome all these new Gentile converts to the faith. The Mark left and the ministry didn't fall apart. Mark left and people didn't stop getting saved. Mark left and the gospel kept going forward. In fact, when Mark Mark left, they saved more lives in chapters 13, 14, and 15 than they did when Mark was with them in the first place. Brothers and sisters, this is interesting in the text. I, I know it doesn't always feel like it, but I've come by this morning to tell you that if they have left you, if like Mark, they had it in them to be bold enough to stand up and walk out on you in the midst of the mission, then God knew what God was doing. Because in the text, we love to give Mark more agency than Mark really has. If God wanted Mark to be there to help with the promotion of the gospel, write this down in your notes. If God wanted Mark to be there to help with the promotion of the gospel, if God needed Mark to be there to help with the conversion of the Gentiles, if God wanted Mark to be there to help with the preaching of the sermons, then God would have kept Mark right where Mark was. Uh, but obviously, the Bible is teaching us that Mark's presence, though I am sure it would have had nice 
nice to have Mark around. Mark's presence was not necessary for God to do what God was going to do through Paul and Barnabas. Uh, stay with me, brothers and sisters, because I'm about to show up at your front doorstep. Uh, yes, it would have been nice if that person had stayed in the marriage. Yes, it would have been nice if daddy had stayed in the home. Sure, it would have been great if you had stayed on the job. Uh, I believe it would have been helpful if you had stayed in the family. Uh, but here's the truth. Uh, like Mark in the text, uh, if God needed them in the marriage, if God needed them in the home, if God needed them in the job, if God needed them in the family for God to accomplish what God was going to accomplish through you, then the person never would have left you in the first place. Uh, the truth of the matter is you are all God needs to get God's will done in and through your life. Uh, and although you want that person back, uh, I want you to know God wants you back. Uh, God wants you to come back to the place where you realize that Mark, before you showed up, it was just me and Paul on the Damascus Road. Uh, Mark, before you showed up, uh, Ananias had touched Paul's eyes uh, and he could see the mission clearly. Uh, Mark, before you showed up, uh, I was confounding the Jews who lived in Damascus uh, and I was proving that Jesus was the Messiah. In other words, when you read the Bible, Mark, you didn't start the movement and therefore, Mark, you leaving can't stop the movement. Uh, can I just make it plain? Uh, go back and remember that God was in your life moving and shaking. Uh, God was in your life ministering and loving. Uh, God was in your life loving you and keeping you before any marks ever showed up in the first place. Uh, and although Mark hurt us by leaving us, what Mark never did was stop the mission that God had called you to. Uh, what Mark never did was stop what God wanted to do through you. Uh, today I need you to understand that God was with you before Mark. God was with you during Mark. And God will be with you after Mark is long gone. Uh, so even though you left me with the question, why did he leave? Uh, God is still with me. Uh, because the better question is not why did you leave? But the question is, God, how will you keep me? Uh, God, how will you help me? Uh, God, how will you use me? Uh, and God, my God, uh, if I was dependent on Mark more than I was dependent on you, thank you for moving Mark out of the way so I can lean on your everlasting arm. Every now and then, every now and then, it takes a bold faith to stand up and thank God for sending Mark back to Jerusalem. Every now and then, you have to realize that God's will shall be done. And whatever God is doing through your life, with the people who are faithful enough to stay in your life, that's all that God needs. Because you and I have to realize that people don't make the show, God makes the show. And anybody that happens to be in your life on the earth, they are just icing on the cake. But the real cake is God in your life. And the sooner you realize that Mark did not wake you up this morning, Mark did not start you on your way, Mark didn't put breath in your body, Mark didn't put your spirit in his spirit, Mark cannot send you to hell, nor does Mark have a heaven to put you into. So I'm sorry, Mark, that you had to leave and go to Jerusalem. But today I declare that my my joy has never left me. Uh, my joy has never forsaken me. And the same joy that was keeping me before you came is the same joy that will keep me long after you're gone. By the time we get to the 15th chapter of Acts, months have passed. Paul and Barnabas have gone to multiple cities over modern-day Greece and modern-day Turkey. Mark has long been back in Jerusalem. Hundreds of miles, Paul and Barnabas, have traveled on their missionary journeys. Thousands of lives that they have saved. Hundreds of new churches have been planted. And in the 36th verse of the 15th chapter, Months after Mark left them and returned to Jerusalem, Paul says to Barnabas, come. Let us return and visit the believers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord to see how they are doing. Here in the text, you must realize that Paul is a great teacher. 
Paul knows that for students to truly learn the new gospel, two coats of paint is better than one because great teachers repeat themselves over and over again to ensure that students learn. Because great teachers repeat themselves over and over again to ensure their students learn. Because great teachers repeat themselves over and over again to ensure that the students learn. So Paul wants to go back and he wants to redo the months of work that he has done with Barnabas, work that has already been done so he can check in on the families that he saved. But Barnabas, I'm in Acts 15, 37. Barnabas now wants to take Mark with them again. It isn't the get back so obvious and so real. Song says, back then you didn't want me. Now I'm hot, you all own me. They've preached for months. They, they've converted thousands. The names of Paul and Barnabas are ringing out all over Turkey and Greece. And now Mark wants to come back. And now Mark wants to come along. And interestingly, we have to pause parenthetically right here and realize that in the Bible, if you put some family relationships together, you'll realize that Barnabas and Mark are cousins. So since blood is supposedly thicker than water, you can see here that Paul says, let's go back and check on the people. And Barnabas says, absolutely, let's go back. But listen, come on, let me take my cousin Mark with us. He, he's ready to go now. Mark is ready to be with us. And three of us we can make a great team. I've been verse 38 of chapter 15. But Paul says, I'm not taking Mark with me. I I'm not taking the one who deserted us in Pamphylia and had not accompanied us in the work. Barnabas says, come on, let's take my cousin Mark. Paul says, no, not because he deserted us, but because he deserted the work God's work of sharing the gospel. The disagreement between Paul and Barnabas became so sharp, says verse 39, that Barnabas ends up splitting away from Paul. Barnabas takes his cousin Mark, sails to Cyprus, while Paul gets another disciple named Silas, and they go to Syria. The disagreement was so sharp, it split up the team. It seems like a major problem, brothers and sisters, until you realize two things in the text. Number one, Paul had no issues, it seems, with Mark. Paul was focused on the work of the gospel, while Barnabas was focused on getting his cousin back on the team. Which one of them was right? Should Paul have forgiven and let Mark got back on the team? Or should Barnabas have realized that Mark had abandoned them while they were promoting the gospel and moved forward with Paul? Who's right and who's wrong? Notice the book doesn't say but the book offers to you two interpretations that you can bring into your own life. If your mark leaves you, you are supposed to stay more focused on the mission that God has for you than you are supposed to stay on the mark that left you in the first place. And if your mark wants to come back, you're supposed to ask the question, is Mark coming back for me or is Mark coming back for the mission that God is doing through me? Secondly, and more importantly, whereas a few months ago, we had one team of three traveling on a mission sharing the gospel. After this disagreement, notice God now has two teams of two going on two different missions to share the gospel. Notice, brothers and sisters in the Bible, that whenever you stop looking at the needs of people, whenever you stop focusing on the needs of people, and you start getting intimately focused on the needs of God, you notice that somehow, even in the midst of human frailty, somehow, even in the midst of human foolishness, somehow, even in the midst of human mindlessness, God still finds a way to win and get his will done before we only had one team of three and now we can share the gospel faster and to more people moving forward with two teams of two uh, and this is all I wanted to tell you this morning I, I cannot tell you why Mark left Paul and Barnabas because the Bible doesn't say uh, just like I cannot tell you why your metaphorical Mark has left in your life uh, but what I do know is that if you believe like me that all things really work together for good uh, for the people who 
who stay focused on the manifestation of God's will in your life, uh, then you must realize that God didn't need Mark in your life for God to continue to bless you. God didn't need Mark in your life for God to continue to use you. God didn't need Mark in your life for the gospel to still go forward. Uh, and if you would trust God more than you trust Mark, uh, if you would believe in God more than you believe in Mark, if you would think about God more than you would think about God, then it's just possible uh, that God might do through you the same thing he did through Paul and Barnabas and other people's lives might get saved. Why did they leave you? I don't know. But I know the one who wants to be with you forever and ever. God bless you, Providence.